to. State Senator Plett. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Colleagues, I'll be brief. I rise to speak to Bill C-282, an act to amend the Department of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Development Act Supply Management. This will now be the eighth speech this chamber has heard on this bill, with four sp senators speaking in favor of the bill and three speaking against. I note that we are expecting additional speakers to speak, uh, including the critic, Senator Harder. So I do not think the 4-3 split can be taken as an indication on how this chamber is going to vote on the bill. It does, however, underscore the diversity of viewpoints and the polarization of positions. My own position on the bill is simple, yet I would say nuanced. That's perhaps not something you're used to coming from me. But it is the case with this bill for reasons that I will explain. At the heart, Bill C-282 is a far cry from supply management sector of agriculture for stability and security. In a world which is changing rapidly, with a future marked by uncertainty, the desire for predictability is very understandable, especially in the agricultural industry. In her speech on this bill, Senator McKellum gave a compelling overview of the history of supply management, outlining the challenges and difficulties of the day which were addressed through the introduction of marketing boards, quotas, and import restrictions. Overproduction, fluctuating prices, and inconsistent income for farmers had been causing significant market instability and disruptions in the domestic market for decades. As described in the Canadian Dairy Commission 40-year retrospective, these difficulties faced by farmers before the creation of supply management system were very real. And I quote, increasing discontent about prices and income across the whole farm spectrum boiled over in Quebec and Ontario, resulting in the 1967 march on Parliament Hill as many as 10,000 Quebec and Ontario dairy farmers protested over low milk prices and the lack of a federal dairy policy. The headlines of the day tell the story. Angry words exchanged at, for, at, for, at farmer slash cabinet talks. Parliament locks out farmers. Irate farmers storm house to climax milk price battle. The doors of Parliament were damaged yesterday as hundreds of farmers tried to get inside to make their case for higher milk prices, read the lead story in the Globe and Mail on May 25, 1967. It was hailed as the largest protest gathering ever seen on Parliament Hill and marked one of the first times the doors of Centre Block were locked against Canadians. And yet, colleagues, even through all this, the then Liberal Prime Minister, Lester B. Pearson, managed to navigate the turmoil and the protests and the anger without having to invoke the War Measures Act, like the current Prime Minister does when he doesn't want to meet angry people. Senator Harder, you knew I would find a way the truth is any attempt to summarize the struggles of farmers over this time period is going to fall short. The challenges stretched over decades, not weeks, months, or years, as farmers wrestled with a market system which did not fully understand and felt they had no control over, according to the Canadian Dairy Commission. In the 1960s, there were nearly 175,000 dairy farmers across the country. Most had limited knowledge about prices and pricing, prices and pricing systems. They knew little or nothing about what was happening across the industry. Former CDC President Carl Harrelson, Harrison said, chaos is a great word to describe the 1960s. The market weight between processors and producers was tilted significantly towards processors. Processors were competing vigorously for market possession, so much so that producers were often caught in between and 
became almost pawns. In their 2018 publication, Canada Supply Management System, the Library of Parliament summed it up this way. During the 1960s, price instability and interprovincial trade disputes were a source of major concern for the poultry, egg and dairy industries. At that time, the Canadian agricultural sector experienced overproduction caused by technological advances resulting in low, unstable prices and disputes between farmers and processors. Faced with this difficult economic situation, farmers sought to strengthen their bargaining power by asking their provincial governments to create marketing boards. It was this situation, price instability, and the fluctuations in farmers' incomes that led to the creation of the supply management system. Colleagues, although controversial at the time, and even now, supply management brought an undeniable level of stability to the sector. The industry would naturally like to see that protected, consisting of dairy, eggs, chicken, and turkey. The supply management industry today contributes $30 billion a year to Canada's GDP, supports 339,000 jobs, and provides $6 billion in tax revenue to governments across the nation. As a whole, the entire agricultural sector contributes $144 billion to the economy and employs 2.3 million people. This, colleagues, is worth protecting. But agricultural significance in Canada transcends mere economics, positioning itself as a foundational pillar of our nation's food security. This sector guarantees that Canadians from all walks of life have consistent access to a variety of safe, nutritious, and affordable food options. In doing so, it not only sustains the physical health and well-being of the population, but also stabilizes and supports the economy by ensuring that the food supply chain remains robust against the backdrop of global uncertainties. This role is critical in a world where food security is increasingly threatened by factors such as climate change, geopolitical conflicts, and supply chain disruptions. Furthermore, the significance of the agricultural sector extends beyond economics and food security into environmental stewardship, playing a critical role in managing land, water, and natural resources sustainably. Public policy that prioritizes and supports this sector, sector is not just beneficial, but it is essential. Policies that ensure stability also foster innovation, sustainability, and resilience against the challenges posed by climate change, market fluctuations, and international trade tensions. I draw your attention to these things, colleagues, to underscore that stability in the agricultural industry is paramount. It is crucial that our public policy strives to pursue this stability amidst the myriad of challenges the agricultural sector faces. And Bill C-282 must be considered with this objective in mind. However, any consideration of the importance of stability in the ag industry would not be complete without acknowledging the immense pressures being faced by our farmers today and the impact that these play on their mental health. Back in 1993, the Standing Senate Committee on Agriculture and Forestry tabled an interim report entitled Farm Stress, Its Economic Dimension, Its Human Consequences. In the report's conclusion, the committee stated the following. The present levels of stress reported by farm communities is unacceptable. The recognition that stress creates ill health and contributes to injury, accidental death, and illness makes it a serious concern of national significance. Colleague, that report was tabled in this chamber on June 21st, 1993, almost 31 years ago. At the time, Brian Mulroney was the Prime Minister of Canada, and Jean Chrétien was the leader of the opposition. 
Federal government revenues were a third of what they are today. The average price of gasoline was 54 cents a litre. The average cost of a new house was $150,000. And I was a much younger man. <laughs> In other words, 31 years ago was a long time ago. But even then, it was clear that those who worked in our agricultural sector were facing significant stresses which were leading to serious mental health challenges. Adverse economic conditions, fluctuating weather, long work hours, lack of information and isolation were all contributing to an alarming rate of mental illness in the ag sector. So much so that the Senate Committee on Agriculture and Forestry decided they needed to look into the matter. A final report was never released by the committee because the committee's work ended with the dissolution of par Parliament when the 35th general election was called. However, in their interim report, they made some important observations which are still relevant today. The first was that unstable and adverse economic conditions were the most significant source of stress for producers. The committee reported that, and I quote, the economic conditions in the agricultural industry are a major source of stress for Canadian farmers and their families and affect almost every facet of farm lives. Unstable economic conditions within the ag industry have been around since the beginning of time. But in 1993, the committee noted that these conditions were being accentuated by high input costs, low market returns, uncertain markets and unfavorable weather conditions. In turn, they were impacting farmers' income, debt, and asset values. The second observation made by the committee was that when taken together, these challenges were having a serious effect on the mental, emotional, and physical well-being of Canadian producers. Over 25 years later, in December of 2019, researchers at the University of Guelph and the University of Alberta released a scoping review entitled Research Trends in Farmers' Mental Health. This was the first scoping review to examine mental health in farming communities worldwide. The objective was to identify studies which examine mental health outcomes in farming populations in order to analyze what work had been completed and what the findings were. The review found that prior to December of 2017, the U.S. had conducted 118 studies on the issues of farmers' mental health. Australia had completed 64, India 43, the U.K. 25, and Canada 16. Only 19 percent of the research had been conducted prior to the year of 2000, with 81 percent taking place since the year of 2000 and almost 50% published in the last seven years, between 2010 and 2017. In 1993, the Senate was tackling an issue which was only beginning to register in the consciousness of the Canadian public. Today, colleagues, things have changed. There is a broad, growing awareness that farmers operate under a burden of unique challenges which pose substantial risks to their mental health because their occupation includes significant components that are beyond their control. The stories are different from one sector to another, but the challenges are the same. From grain, to cattle, to hogs, to poultry, to dairy, to eggs, to horticulture, producers have to contend with market volatility, extreme weather, financial pressures, isolation, excessive government regulation, long work hours, machinery breakdowns, animal rights activists, and more. It is not hard to understand that farmers cope with unusual levels of stress, uncertainty, and anxiety. And this is the reason why we must carefully consider the bill before us today. For producers in the supply management sector, these anxieties include the outcome and impact of trade negotiations. Since the emergence of global trade liberalization in the 1960s, farmers have found themselves in an ongoing struggle to protect the supply management system from being negotiated away by politicians eager to strike international trade agreements. Beginning with the Uruguay round of GATT in 1986 and the Canada-US trade agreement in 1989, the supply management sector has fought for 40 years to protect the stability 
that this system brought to farmers and has been very successful. And I want to note that over this time, the sector was well represented and well protected by our negotiators and the government. Although some concessions have been made under NAFTA, CETA, CPTPP, and Kuzma, the system continues to receive strong support from Parliament and the government. Both the Conservative government under Prime Minister Stephen Harper and today's Liberal government have openly supported supply management, and the House of Commons has unanimously affirmed its support for supply management on several occasions. I believe that this political support may be the best protection available for supply management, and I am concerned that Bill C-282 may erode that support rather than strengthen it. Like many of you, I have had representatives from the agricultural sector come to my office to make their case in favor of this bill. Yeah. And I have had representatives from the ag sector come and make the case against this bill. I want everybody to understand I stand with the agricultural sector. And as noted by Senator Black in his speech, the agricultural community is badly divided on this bill. The reason for that is because, as pointed out by Senator Simons, this is not an agricultural bill, it's a trade bill. And this, colleagues, this is where much of my concern lies. In October of 2023, an open letter was sent to all senators from 19 individuals described as the finest trade negotiators to have represented Canada over the past decades, and including our own Stephen Harper. In that letter, they urged senators to not approve Bill C-282 and state that, if passed into law, Bill C-282 would seriously handicap Canadian governments and their trade negotiators to accommodate the give and take of future trade negotiations, to open up new markets and secure valued access for Canadian products, services and investments. These concerns were echoed by the Canadian Agri-Food Trade Alliance, which contends that Bill C-282 will hurt, not help, the Canadian agricultural sector. The organization notes that agri-food exporters exported $92 billion in agri-food products in 2022 and supported over a million jobs in urban and rural communities across Canada, all of which could be threatened and reduced by Bill C-282. They go on to state that the bill will hurt Canada's ability to make trade decisions. It will tie the hands of trade negotiators, resulting in less ambitious outcomes. It will jeopardize our trade with our biggest export market, the United States. Will harm other sectors that depend on trade and contradicts Canada's commitment in recently signed declarations on food security at the G7, the G20, the WTO, and APEC. Colleagues, I find this concerning. These are not claims which we should or can dismiss lightly. They need to be carefully examined at committee to ensure that the decision made with respect to Bill C-282 is in the best interests of both farmers but also for all Canadians. I know there was talk about sending this bill to the Agricultural Committee, but colleagues, that would have not been the right decision. Although the issues under consideration impact agriculture, they specifically, very specifically, pertain to trade policy, as is indicated by the fact that the bill is entitled an act to amend the Department of Foreign Affairs Trade and Development Act. We have other legislation which governs the supply management policy framework, and this bill does not amend or alter that legislation. As a bill which specifically addresses trade, I support this bill going to the Senate Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs and International Trade for a thorough and robust review. I urge all of the committee members to give it serious, sober thought 
because though it is well-intentioned, I fear that it will not yield the outcomes that the sponsor is hoping for. Thank you, colleagues.